The Stoa is a digital campfire where we cohere in dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of what's happening now. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Stoa. Peter Lindbergh, the steward of the Stoa. The Stoa is a place for us to cohere and dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of this very moment. And at the knife's edge, there's going to be some honesty, some honest sharing. Um, and uh, today's guest, uh, Gopal Klein, uh, he created this technique modality called honest sharing. And I think um, the person who introduced me, Samuel, uh, he said, hey, have you heard of this guy, uh, Gopal Klein? I'm like, no. And then I watched a YouTube video. I'm like, okay, let's invite him on a week later. He's here. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to explore um, Gopal's background, uh, honest sharing, and then we're going to have a, I'm going to have a conversation with him. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Again, I'll unmute you. You ask your question. If you don't want to be on YouTube, I'll read on your behalf. And then halfway through, we may have an, um, like a demo. Uh, so if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer. Then we'll end off with a Q&A, an hour in total. Um, so that being said, uh, Gopal, welcome to the Stoa. Yeah, hi, everyone. So maybe we can start with um, a little bit of your background in uh, trauma work and, and the therapeutic background and maybe how that led to this thing called uh, honest sharing. Yeah, um, it started all with uh, developmental trauma which uh, was my own history. And the first decades of my life, I tried to find a solution. I, I tried to heal myself, which finally happened uh, through a trauma therapist. And later on, I um, yes, did training in var various methods, uh, also spiritual techniques. And um, later on, I I thought about, because I thought about the whole um, situation of humanity, because I was flooded with so many requests also from other countries that I realized the, the idea that we have a therapist for everyone is um, not working. This is the, the setup we are used to, but it's not working. If we think about it, um, we will never have enough therapists for everyone and we will never have enough spiritual masters for everyone. So I prayed and meditated a long time and asked for a solution for that. And uh, it happened, suddenly a whole structure appeared in my mind and I called that honest sharing and I wrote it down and published it and started building groups. And this is the story of this, this method, this, this technique. And today we have about uh, 550 groups in several countries and it really works. And yeah, so before I go into detail, maybe you, you want to, to ask some, some more. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious about the um, methodology, like what is the um, structure of it? Yeah, the, stu the, the structure is actually very simple. It just means that we share the content of our three levels of experience. And the three levels of experience are the physical sensations in the body, the emotions, and the thoughts. So this sounds easy and obvious. Um, but it's about sharing it in a certain way. The usual way we share what is inside of us is, does not lead to a real deep connection and not to a healing. Because what we usually do, we communicate what is inside of us as if it is the reality with full identification. For example, um, if I think about something, some event yesterday, I could tell my friend, wow, yesterday I had a great evening. So this is not how it works because it's with full identification. Honest sharing works like that, that we talk about the content as if it 
is of somebody else. For example, in my mind, there are thoughts about a great evening yesterday. And you may already perceive a difference what this makes what this uh, makes with you, it, it, it triggers another reaction in the body and in the psyche. And in that way, we communicate with all, all layers. For example, there are emotions of joy. Or in my physical body, there's pain in my right knee. So we talk about that as if it is of someone else. Sounds strange at the beginning, but if we do it like that, it has several implications. For example, if I can talk about my emotions in that way, it is obvious for the other system, for the other nervous system, that I don't have to act it out or to act it in. For example, if, there, if there's hate or aid, uh, um, anger, and if, I'm, if I can tell, in I feel hate or there are emotions of anger. This is different to acting it out like you idiot or fuck or whatever. Yeah. And if I communicate it like that, the other system does not have to go into a defense reaction. So instead of acting it out as we usually do, we start communicating it with this identification and thus the, the other nervous system is able to stay in a state of stability and safety and the, the interaction can continue. And the other thing is, if we, if we practice that sooner or later, we realize that there must be something else beyond these three layers because otherwise we couldn't talk about it. So what is that? that is able to share these three layers. There must be some, a fourth thing and you can call that consciousness. And if we practice that, we, we more and more um, get beyond these levels and we reach a state of, or not a state, we, we, we reach the, the level of consciousness and this in the end leads to meditation. So a summary. And so is there any additional um, parameters there as like, is it two people uh, talk? Is there multiple people that can do it? Like there's a duration for each turn. Yeah, there is the um, possibility to do it as a couple. So two people, it is also possible to do it in a group and it is even possible to do it alone. Um, it is important that um, that this works is important that another one is able and wanting to listen to that. This is important. I forgot to mention that. We need healing and transformation is always about energy flow. And if we start sharing our content, we need another one who, who wants to listen to that. And if he does really op is open and, and wants to listen to that, the energy flows through. And this is what creates the, the healing and the transformation. And the great thing is that the other one can actually listen to that because if we communicate in that way, it is not threatening to us. It is always interesting. It is not um, something we have to protect us from them, from that. So it's easy to be open and listen. And this creates the flow. So this is the, um, the condition we need too. And if there's nobody, we even can do that with the universe. So we, mm, we assume that the, the, the life, the universe is another, is an, a, like another person and we talk to the universe. Also, this is possible, but it's better to do that with humans, of course. And uh, for the time, I would suggest maybe um, at the beginning, not more than five minutes for each one to do that. And maybe a group of six people, six to eight is the maximum, because otherwise it takes too long, the whole process. And um, so we'll field some questions uh, first, and then we'll do a demo. How would the demo look like here at the, the STOA? How, how do you recommend? 
Yeah, I would recommend that we um, ask if two people would like to try that. And um, I will, um, yeah, I will look at it and maybe give some corrections or comments and each one five minutes. And then it's important for the others, if they want to look inside what this, what this makes with you. Because if you see people doing that, everyone who listens to that will, will something will happen in the system. Mm. Yeah. So this is very interesting. And another thing is, um, it is not necessary to, um, how to explain that, to overcome our limits. Many people think, okay, I need something to have to share, or maybe I don't, I don't dare to try to communicate my anger. This is, it is not necessary to go beyond our limits and to force ourselves to do things which we are not able to or we don't like. So instead of trying to get beyond the limits, it is important to communicate the limits. For example, I have the idea that telling about the telling a certain feeling it is too much for this setting here or something like that so there's absolutely no pressure it's about communicating what's there and if there's nothing like um right now i don't feel anything so we don't go beyond limits we don't force ourselves to anything it's just sharing what's there and this is already the solution so the the way we the, pros, the um, process as such is already the solution. There's no um, goal beyond that. It's not, we don't do that to heal something actually or to um, solve any conflicts. It's the exchange as such is already the solution. So uh, we'll source um, two volunteers and then you will be kind of like supervising it and they will speak about what is there for them in those three categories uh, as if it's someone else that they're talking on behalf of. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll, we'll source that in a moment. Uh, but we'll, if you have any questions right now, uh, put them in the chats. I'll call on you uh, and I'll take in Chris uh, for the first question. Hey, Gopal. Thanks for the session. Um, my question is, what is your attitude towards the words I am? How do we use the words I am in such a way that draws in one's experience and opens them up for group experience without identifying with it? Or is I am inherently identifying and inherently uh, causing a separation? Um, yeah, if you start sharing with sentences that begin with I am, it's not actually the, how it works because mm, you are consciousness, you are not content. So it's like we, we communicate like that, but it's not working um, because then we talk about as it's, it's with full identification. So I mean, you can do an example if you want, but the, the way to talk is, for example, like in my physical body, there's this and this. In my heart, there are these, these feelings or there are feelings of whatever, or in my mind, there are thoughts about whatever. But if you start, I am, or yeah, then it's, it's not because you are consciousness. You are not, not, not that what you want to share. Is, I, is, is that, um, did I understand that right, your question? So would saying I am having tension within my chest, would that be identifying? Because from the way I've said it, it doesn't feel identifying. It's, it's just pointing a name to a label to an experience I'm having, but it's not necessarily identifying with it. If that is so for you, it's okay, but I would recommend not to use this term um, you, you can use in, in my body or in my right knee, because if you start, I am, then you are some, somehow on the right, wrong track, uh, what honest sharing is, is all about. So it's my recommendation to do it like that. Thanks for the clarification. All right, so we have uh, two volunteers. Um, if they want to unmute themselves, um, 
one was sort of on asked uh, AJ. <laughs> um, so uh, Andy and AJ, um, feel free to inquire with Gopal if, if there's any clarification you want. And then after this demo, then we'll continue on with the, the Q&A. So I'll hand it over to you three right now. I have a question for you. It, five minutes strikes me as a long time. Can you do a, a shorter share? Is it just sort of like, should you push yourself to really go deep or just kind of do a scan of what's present? You, you, if you can, um, you can just stop it when you think it's enough for you and more would, um, would be too difficult because it's um, if you're forced to share something and you don't want it actually that's not not uh, good for for our system so you just say um, that's it for now I'm I'm done then the next one uh, can uh, continue and it's not about just to mention that again it's not about going deep into something it's really not about changing anything not to go deep not to find anything not to present anything and not to do anything it's really just sharing what's there and would we do multiple back and forth shares no no it's uh, five minutes um one part and five minutes the other part it's not a dia it's not a dialogue because yeah I, sh I should have mentioned that because if we go into dialogue like we do usually we immediately are on the head and in full identification and then we are actually out of really exchanging something so it's not a dialogue it's not about reacting to the other it's not even about com uh, commenting to what we've heard it's just an in being open and receiving it and no 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 interaction in any way okay so do you want to interrupt us when we have reached about five minutes? Is that how you'd like to work it? Yeah, we can do that. Yep. Okay. So and we, will you comment as we're doing it or afterwards? I will interrupt uh, be, you because um, I think this is this is better for, because it's the first time and I think it's it's better after five minutes to takes too long to remember. So. This is my, my suggestion. That sounds good. Okay. Then who, who wants to start? I'll start. Um, I'm feeling in my chest right now, physically, a little bit of higher heart rate and kind of adrenaline flow in my body. And emotionally, I'm feeling excited um, and a little confused because this Anna sharing conceptually. Okay, I would like to interrupt here. Sorry, okay. it's, I know it doesn't feel very nice, but just 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 um, two points. You what what you can look at the the speed you started immediately starting, yeah. Just for you to to think about it, and what you did right now, you started to um, talk about reasons because. Okay. You remember? Yes. You started about uh, body feelings, then they oh, okay. and then you started reasoning. Okay. And at that point, we are out of honest sharing because then it's with full identification of the mind and we, we hear a story. All right, so I, I should just talk about the immediate um, thought, emotion, and bodily sensations without trying to find an underlying uh, explanation for them. Yeah, the explanation is not part of honest sharing. It is, okay. it's, um, yeah, it's, you can talk about that if, if you say in my mind, there appears uh, thoughts about why this happens. Yeah, but if you say, um, because da 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 da, then you are not talking about the content of your mind like it is of somebody else. You, you are fully merged, fully, you are fully one with, with the content of your mind. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it takes so, some time. Um, the emotions right now are um, 
both uh, curiosity and um, a feeling of anticipation of hope um, that by learning about this process, um, we can use it as another tool. Now you again, sorry, I have to, can I interrupt. Now you again, you, you see that the mind gets in and you start following the mind stream with, 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 with full identification. This is how we usually talk with each other. We, we exchange these streams of thoughts with full identification, yeah? And we, we communicate as if that is the reality. Just to to to, re to see, it, you, you talk about emotions and suddenly the mind comes in and you are gone. Okay. Maybe it's easier to um, clearly um, focus on one layer. For example, you start with the body sensations, okay. then, you, then you do only emotions. Okay. And then you try to communicate what's in your mind. To okay. keep that separate makes makes it easier at the beginning. Okay, so it's shifted from the chest to a feeling of warmth in my fingers. Emotionally, there's a, a relaxation that's happened in the last few minutes. Um, this is the body. Relaxation is the body, it's not the emotions. Sticking with the body, okay. Um, A little bit of um, feeling of distraction, uh, which is being felt as a little bit of tingling in my hands and um, that, can I, can I incorporate how that seems emotionally? If there's you, you just just talk what's there there are em emotions of whatever in my body i feel this and that in my mind there are these thoughts okay it's not about uh, understanding something or explaining okay. anything there are emotions of excitement and anticipation and uh, playfulness and volunteering to participate and hope that I and we can you hope that you, you you see that's the point where you exit in the mind you you, you understand yeah. yes um, you, you can do that but then communicate with uh, without identification it's not it's no problem okay in my mind there's there are thoughts about whatever for example okay in my mind, there are thoughts about trying to understand what these bodily feelings and emotions might be telling me about how I feel about participation in this process, what I expected or was wondering, curious about this session and how it may be another tool we can use here and um, what kind of skills that are needed to do this most mm -hmm. effectively without. Okay, but you, now you have to be careful. It's okay, but you have to be careful that you don't go into endless stories, but by just starting with, you know what, what I mean? You, you can do that, but then uh, it is good to uh, again and again start the sentences with um, their thoughts in my mind because otherwise you are again lost in the mind you just started it okay. uh, introducing uh, in the right way it, it the mind is the most difficult um, part because 
if actually this layer is um, with without identification, you are we could say almost enlightened. I would say, but yeah. So it's it's very difficult. That's that's normal because we are fully we are usually fully identified uh, with, with the mental with the mental content. Okay. But you you did every layer, so it's basically that's it. And now it would be interesting how it, how uh, it was for you. But we can do that maybe in at, at uh, when when uh, uh, when we are finished with the session with the session. Is that okay for you uh, to yes. at this point? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. My turn. Okay, I'll start with my body sensations. I'm noticing that my heart is racing. I can feel it all kind of up here. Um, I'm noticing my breath is sort of shallow. I'm noticing a bit of a feeling in my stomach that's a little bit like sick or maybe that's an interpretation. I'm noticing like queasiness in my stomach. I'm noticing that my hands are cold. And my feet are cold. I'm going to go to the emotional realm. I think I would describe this as anxiety, this feeling. And there's like some playfulness that is kind of making me smile a little bit. Um, I wanna say the word nervous, but I'm aware that maybe that's a thought. No, nervous, being nervous is, is a body uh, sensation. It's, part, it's, it's, the, it's a physical body. So it's like, uh, yeah, nervous smile. And there's, I'm not sure, sort of half emotion, half feeling. It's like there's the potential, it feels like there's the potential for tears, but it's quite far back. And this is, okay, I interrupt you. It's yep. now you, you start to explain and um, talking about the context. It is not necessary. Just, just what you feel, what you perceive in the body, yeah. Just that, for example, little pressure and pressure in uh, in the in the eyes or what, whatever, and mm -hmm. you you can tell what your mind tell, thinks about it. But then, really, in my mind, there are thoughts, or my mind thinks about and so on. Otherwise, it's mixed up a little bit. It is normal the tendency to 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 mix everything with the mind with the mental content. This is how how we usually communicate. Um, yeah. Well, there's there's definitely something, kind of like around and behind my eyes, and uh, my brain is interpreting it as like pre tears. And exactly, Exa that's exactly how it works. My okay. mind says that it could be pre tears, whatever. Then you you create distance to your mental layer, and this is the the most important step because you are not the thoughts. There's this. There's like an 
energy coming up in my body that's yeah. like a little bit defensive or something. Well, okay, that's my interpretation again. There's a there's an energy coming up that's like really alivening me. Okay, cool. And I have some interpretations about it. So let's go to the brain, the thoughts. Yeah, there's like a, um, there are some there's some like thrust towards arguing coming up, and there's some like defensive thoughts. I, I would really commend uh, um, uh, recommend to 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 tell the to say the layer you're talking about, because if you just say there is, it's not clear that's your mind. Okay. It it's really helpful to in in my mind. There's it makes things really clear also for you so to, to create the distance yeah yeah so in my mind hmm. in my mind there's like an image of me looking kind of sad oh. and hmm, it's not a lot <laughs> is that it there's not well okay that's a thought no. i guess in my mind is this is this looking looking i'm looking for something and i'm trying to find something yeah exactly Maybe That's there's nothing. There's nothing in my mind right now. No thoughts. There is a thought in my mind, and that thought is: I wish there was something here to show that would be <laughs> interesting. Okay, good. Okay, you have passed through all layers. Is that okay that we stop it at at that point? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and now. Um, maybe you both want to share what happens inside of you how how you experience that talking and listening if you want andy do you want to go i feel relieved to have been the guinea pig and um gotten it out of the way um i think i understand it better after hearing AJ's version of it and um, it's, it's a really new way of of being to to dissociate the interpretation and just describe and that's kind of cool I like it okay. there's, a, there's a relaxation now that um, was not there Go ahead, AJ. Yeah. I was surprised to discover that what I thought were thoughts were actually more sensations and feelings that I was just interpreting. So the thought was just this interpretation. And when I kind of let that go, there just wasn't much there. And that, that was, I guess I really wanted there to be something in there to show for the sake of being interesting or something. And so that was, it was, it was I enjoyed being invited to really pull stuff apart and be clear. I really appreciated that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, just to give you some more context, what we have heard from you both is on the one hand, physiological changes. Yeah, you talked about, um, for example, curiosity or relaxation or um, I think joy. All these um, indicate physiolo physiological state changes. And th th that was ch that which changes is the idea of the body that the other is a danger, a threat to me. As long as we 
live in a society we do right now, actually all our bodies interpreted, interpret other people as potential threat or danger. And what you experience is that if you share these things, your body realizes that the other is not a threat to me. And that creates the relaxation and that actually creates the energy flow and all the states that follow like joy and curiosity. And this is how, how the, the power of this uh, is visible for, for you and for everyone who, do, who does that process. The, in, the, the crucial point is the emotional level. What we see uh, at the beginning that people start focusing on the mind or on the body sensations. But the most important level is that we are able to exchange our emotions because this is what connects us. And this is what brings safety and um, security to our autonomous nervous system. And this is the, um, the way how we, we heal as individuals and as the society. And of course, if you do that, on a regular basis, there will come, you, you will enter deep processes. And it will really change your life. This is not an exaggeration. It's really like that. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe if you want, I can do it also that you see how I would do it. I mean, maybe I should have done that at the beginning, but is that okay for a few uh, seconds? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, I feel some tension in my belly. The rest of my body is relaxed. I feel that um, I feel my spine and some mm, nervousness because of the. Um, session we do here me now i i'm myself uh, went into the mind so i feel joy and in my mind there are thoughts about if all this is understandable there are thoughts about mm, if you like that Yeah, that's it. I'd like to take it, Margaret. She had a kind of a question about uh, use of the word me. Thanks, Peter. Hi, Gopal. Hi. Um, I'm curious uh, around the language constraints in that uh, one of the things I heard as being a goal of this practice is to create distance between the stories generated by the mind um, and the actual phenomenological content of our experience. And I'm wondering why the exercise offers the use of the word my, like my body, um, like I am feeling versus language like the body, like the body is experiencing a sensation of hot warmth in my foot, you know, what, and there I just did it again. So I'm wondering um, around that, why, for example, is that not invited as an extra step? Um, because it is your body. It, you are responsible for it. You have uh, received a physical body. And so from my point of view, it is uh, good to communicate it like that. Um, but if you start with I am, then you are you're off the tracks. So if you say in my mind, there's that and that in my physical body, th this is the reality. You are not that, but it's your like... Um, yeah, it's your possession for a certain time. So, of course, if you're enlightened, 
you don't you have no um, identification with anything anymore and you, there are even people who are who have problems uh, with their with their body because their identification is so lost yeah but for for our purpose this is too much I mean, if you want to do that you can you can yeah you can talk like that in in the body or in this body there's that and that it's it's okay it works so i'm i'm hearing that perhaps the emphasis is on beginning a statement with a grounding in the like layer to which one is referencing mm -hmm. regardless of the language around that layer yeah thank you Laura, did you want to share your thought? Uh, yeah, we, we can't we can't hear you, Laura. Um, I can I can share it on on your behalf. So so Laura said, sounds like the point might not be avoiding I or my, but M. And maybe you can double click on that. Like, what what's so significant about I am? Hmm. Actually, we don't realize what we are. So we could, from a spiritual perspective, all our problems have to do with identification with manifestations. We don't realize that we are pure consciousness. And as soon as, as, soon as we are identified with anything, with our body, with our mind, with our culture, with our country, with even with being a human, the problems start. Because it's not the truth. Everything comes and goes. Our body comes and goes. Our mind comes and goes. All the energy phenomena come and go. And yeah, so it's, we must be careful. And the, this exercise is like this, the honest children is like a bridge to consciousness. Um, we cannot skip that. What many people do in the spiritual uh, field, they try to skip the relational level and try to get into um, enlightenment or consciousness directly without solving their developmental trauma. And this doesn't work because it neglects the, the needs of the body. We, we are mammals. And mammals need interaction, need deep relationships. And the usual way we talk and interact and build relationships are not real relationships because nothing really is exchanged. We talk nonsense, yeah, and we do things together with the, with the body, but actually we don't exchange anything anymore. So this honest sharing creates a bridge. It heals our relationships. It brings us in a deep contact and the result is that we more and more grow into into the, the pure consciousness, and finally we realize that that we are we are not the body, we are not the emotions, and we are even not our thoughts. We, we are that that perceives all that, and this is not even being a human. This is pure consciousness has no um, it has no name, it has no form. Yeah, it it, it cannot be condensed in something like being a human. Does this answer your question? Yes, uh, it does. Um, AJ, uh, did you have a question or a share? I had a question. Um, I'm just curious, Gopal, why um, you aren't setting this up as a relational practice of back and forth, perhaps more like circling. And I, I say that because when you interrupted me, it was really fascinating to see what came up in me as a result of that. And so I'm just curious what the, why you've made that choice. Well, why I don't uh, designed it with uh, direct interaction, you mean yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, because um, direct interaction wouldn't be actually the problem, but we tend to get lost in the mind. And as, as soon as we do that direct interaction, the tendency and the, the danger is too great to get lost in the mind. 
and it's not necessary it's really not necessary because energy flows through listening and being open and if we constantly interact yeah it, it tends to go into the mind and this is what we see in every hum in every normal conversation if you go into a pub or wherever you look you see two physical bodies who play ping pong with the mental content with full identification and we call that conversation or even relationship it is nothing of both it is two people in deep sleep they don't exchange anything they dream and by removing this direct interaction it is possible to, to bring more consciousness into that process in listening and in communicating in, in sharing and of course if you have um, lots of practice you you can of course do that but um, you need a lot of practice to to then not get lost in the mind do you think it's a um like an advanced mode like let's say if aj and i were sharing like he shares something then i share something then he shares something so we're bouncing off of each other's shares so there's like that uh, deeper relational quality to it as well absolutely this this uh, shows that there's a high level of consciousness and a high level of disidentification and then it's possible um and we can maybe we can um, also talk about relationships in general what why that this doesn't work what the relationship we build today always tend to go into a defense reaction of the nervous system and this is um, fight flight or freeze we can reduce every relational problem to these three states of the nervous system and with sharing like that the body and the system doesn't have to go into into a defense reaction and right. as soon as we um, lose that um, it is um, that it is easy to go to go into a conflict because if the if the, identif in the identification with the mind is there it is dangerous to um, listen to another opinion for example and then the, the fight starts and so this has to be avoided Cool. Um, Elf, you had a question. What's up, Gopal? Very fascinating. Um, I just made a comment too, but it just something came to mind around like uh, Peter's advanced mode. But like in meditation, you kind of deconstruct the self and then later on, maybe you reconstruct it more skillfully. That'd be like the whole Bodhisattva path. But like here, it seems like you're dis disidentifying with phenomenology, but then the advanced mode would be like connecting with the other person as well. Um, that was just more of a thought. But my qu original question was, I was just wondering about the speed of this, because a lot of times when I say also, as you may be advanced, um, it's by the time someone's describing the image, if you're really with it, it's gone, right? Um, so could this get very fast as you become more advanced. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like Margaret mentioned Mahasi style earlier, like in one or two seconds, if you're on retreat mode, you notice 20 sensations, you know, it's so like, how are you communicating? Yeah. Um, there's no advanced mode. Something like this does not exist. Yeah. Advanced mode is an idea of the mind that I do something better or faster or better or advanced and then something else happens. Hmm. It's, it's only about sharing what's there. There is no better mode or no advanced mode. This, this doesn't exist. And if you reduce the speed like I am doing now, it is more easy or, yeah, to be conscious unconsciousness or the faster you communicate you fast the faster you do things with your body the more unconscious you get so if you do that process and you will see that naturally you slow down hmm. 
and the speed comes from the from the survival energy that is in the system that actually drives our interaction we, we actually don't interact we we are all lost in survival struggle also although we don't realize that but from my well from my point of view i can see that it's obvious for me so the energy that drives the survival the struggle for the survival will be diminished by honest sharing and then everything comes to peace on its own like you maybe you during i'm talking maybe you, you feel it already or you feel something changes yeah yeah um i agree and disagree i'm feeling <laughs> uh, feeling uh of vibrations in chest. Uh, I pushing back a little. Um, I, I get what you're saying, and I think it's um, there's something to slowing down. But I think it's also I totally agree. Like advanced mode is poor framing. That's a concept, but so is a concept that I shouldn't use. I am right. I know enlightened masters who can use I am, but they don't have an identification with it. So I think what you're really brilliantly pointing to is our relationship with the phenomenology. And this is a very interesting tool to hack that as a feedback loop. I get for most that slowing down would, would, would encourage a certain skillfulness, but I also know <clears throat> like if I've been on a retreat for three months, I could very mindfully and marinate and be fully conscious of those sensations, but there'd be a faster speed. But also it's like, it's like music maybe there's a faster pace and maybe it's a slower pace it's not right and wrong but it's what's there and what level you want to share it at i don't know I, i'm not just kind of i mean you can, up more. you can maybe you, you just reflect what actually you want to tell me now what's what's the point well i guess i was just present with 12 sensations there but I have to go through a filtration process to decide what I want to share with you. So I was conscious with a lot, but even without getting into conceptual mind, there is, there's more there than I can share with language. Mm -hmm. so there's that step. Yeah, and maybe all this is just a protection for the emotions. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it, there's nothing complicated and nothing complex. You can think about it, yeah. Maybe it's just to protect yourself from 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 emotions that had no space yet. The my intuition is you're probably totally right. There's a lot of spiritual bypassing that goes on a couple month retreat, but uh, even with that. I think from my experience now, there's, if we we're doing the dialogue, which I'm not, there's a certain bandwidth that you can be present with and to communicate, there is a narrowing. And maybe that's just my personal um, experience right now. So there is a filtration. And that also, you could be right. There's uh, a lack of whatever emotional is, process. Yeah, what, whatever is there, uh, whatever is there, you, you can communicate there's no hindrance it the, the system tells us that there is a problem because in the childhood there was a problem and as a grown up the system always finds a reason why there is a problem with it exchanging this is interesting it, mm. it the mind pops up with ideas why it is not possible or, or why there are problems there are no problems it's about sharing what's there, whatever is there, complex, not complex, filter, no filter, confusion, hate, love. Yeah. And this is a learning process to, to step back and give it a word and share it. And this creates the disidentification. And sooner or later, you realize that you are nothing, nothing of that appears. You are nothing of that that appears. I'm going to jump in, Elf, but maybe you can wrap up this share if you have one more. No, I'm good, Peter. I think we could go back and forth a few times. I, I agree. Thank you, Gopal. It's, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. 
So we're coming at the top of the hour. Um, we'll close soon. I'd like after the session, if anyone wants to stay in the Zoom room and want to do one round, maybe we'll do breakout rooms. I, I kind of want to play. So um, uh, feel free to stick around once the recording stops. Um, but Gopal, um, my last question to you is, see if we want to play this game at the STOA um, or do this technique, how would you recommend we go about it? As, sorry, the last I didn't understand. Uh, how thing. would you recommend uh, we like go about playing this game at the STOA or continuing on this technique? Because we have a wisdom gym here and say if we want to port it in there and whatnot. How, yeah. how would you... the, the best way, of course, is to do it in a, on the physical plane. So with uh, people in one room, you can do it also online like here. And I would recommend everyone five minutes and um, groups not larger than six people so that it doesn't it's not too long and at the beginning really start uh, really um, going through these three layers step by step not mix them up because it makes things too complicated start with the body then the mind and emotions or whatever um, however you want it and then you you will sooner or later you get the point and if there's something un not clear you can ask me and so I'm there to, to assist or help you. Very cool. So we're going to officially close up now. Uh, is there any final words you'd like to sh uh, share with us? Uh, any place we can find your work? Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you are open for that. Uh, this is very valuable and it's extremely powerful. You, as soon as you do that, you, you will experience the, the immense power of that process. It, it really can change your life if you do it. Very cool, very cool. Um, and so thank you, Gopal, for coming to the STOA today. Uh, and thank you, Samuel, for introducing me to this via email. He's, he's in the room right there. Um, so I'll make some closing announcements and then we'll stop the record. And anyone who wants to stay, uh, we can kind of play a, a round or two. Um, upcoming events, we got an event today with me and AJ Bond, the shame educator. AJ, do you want to um, plug that event? Sure. Uh, tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time, Peter and I are going to co-host a special two-hour shame breakthrough boot camp in which we're going to explore a bunch of different things, but some of the kind of collective shame of the STOA itself. So it should be really interesting, and I'd love to see somebody there. And there's the RSVP. I predict that the shame will be eliminated after that event, but AJ would disagree with me on that one, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then, oh, I'm so excited for this. Acceptance, commitment, therapy, and introduction. Um, Stephen Hayes, uh, he's the guy that created acceptance, commitment, therapy, and they have something, a technique, cognitive diffusion. Uh, it's quite similar to what we did here today. Um, that really helped me up my stoic game. So you can check that out. That's on December 14th at 2 p.m. And then another session uh, that's trauma-related, uh, Cultural Somatics with Tada uh, Hozumi. Um, that's December 17th. He wrote this article called Why White People Can't Dance, uh, which I quite liked. <laughs> it's at least true for me. Um, you can uh, check that uh, there. Um, and that being said, uh, I'll play some music. If you want to go on a bio break, you can. And then uh, we'll figure out how we're going to um, play around with this. So again, Gopal, everyone, thank you for coming to the store. Thank you. Oh, we have a Discord if you want to continue. It's, it's not official. It's a mysterious thing. I, I don't know. But if someone wants to drop in the chat, they, they can. All right. <laughs>